Hey, hi all good morning and we are going to talk about today how we are going to set up the uh, tools for automation tool for the automation classes and how we quickly start for the installation of um, Ubuntu and Mint operating system by importing in the virtual box then we will see what lab topology we supposed to understand the connectivity and this topology going to be used throughout the your Ansible and Python classes. So this is the base topology on that we going to add or remove if you want most probably it's going to be add any new app or the tool or connectivity you can say connectivity stuff like LAN or WAN connectivity we will see. So let's quickly start with the virtual box that is we already completed installation of virtual box we saw in the last class and we're going to continue from that how we will see. so we have virtual box installed you can see the symbol here this is the virtual box installation completed so let's open this so i i already shared you the lint uh, linux mint automation lab which is running with the mint operating system and i have assigned this mint operating system you can see the 8 gb ram i will i will i will ask you to assign at least 8 gb because your gns three ap application are running on that and other so major topology going to be covered from here so better you assign 8 gb ram here and rest of like um, you can assign the general purpose server 2 gb ram i have given the 8 gb ram but you can decrease this i will teach you how you can decrease this second i am going to give you ova file for the for the this um, support linux system this is the again gui operating system and you can assign 2 gb ram to this so server you need to assign 2 gb ram and the system you need to assign 2 gb ram that's more than enough so total you need 12 gb ram for this system minimum and the remaining you keep 4 gb for your system to run proper so 16 gb minimum memory you need to carry out okay so i'm going to pause for a second any any query for the memory allocation yeah uh how we can uh, assign this ram uh, can how you... can you assign memory it's a very easy once we will import i will show you so let me show you how easy just go for suppose i want to assign the use i want to assign the memory or we want to decrease or reset the memory for support linux system just select that in your virtual box you are on the you can see on the same page of you can see the descriptions how many nick card you can see there's two nick card assigned one for um, wireless one for lan we will discuss later you go for the setting command click setting on that you can see the this pop-up going to become for you can verify with your system to whom you going to change that's the support line system and you can see the variant go for storage storage no sorry go for the system the first tab system then you have motherboard process and acceleration so you can assign two of cpu because i have eight cpu you can assign two cpu or one cpu for server you must assign two cpu otherwise it's not going to work or for your system operating system like for desktop operating system you can assign one cpu but generally i will provide the two cpu i have provided now come to the motherboard in the motherboard first option you have 4 gb you can decrease or increase okay or you can type direct 2048 okay and you can click okay once you will click okay so your memory going to be 
डिक्रीज विद टू जी बी क्लियर ओके ना लेट्स लेट्स सी हाउ वी कैन इम्पोर्ट द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम डायरेक्टली सो आई हैव ऑलरेडी डाउनलोडेड आई होप यू गाइज ऑल्सो ऑलरेडी डाउनलोडेड तो लेट मी शो यू वेयर आई हैव डाउनलोडेड दिस सिस्टम सो आई विल गो टू माई फाइल सिस्टम एंड सो दिस इज डेस्ट ऑफ आई हैव कैप्ट ऑल द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इन माई डॉक्यूमेंट सो यू कैन डाउनलोड एंड कॉपी टू द डॉक्यूमेंट और यू कैन कीप इन डाउनलोड download folder also if you are able to maintain those files now so like i have if you have also downloaded so it will show linux mint automation lab ova file one file second is generic server ova file i am not going to show for you this i am going to select one for this general purpose server for ova file and i will show you how to import and start working that so you have to practice for this same way you have to practice for importing this so let's come through. i will come to my virtual box and you can select the tool first tab is tool you can see the preference import export new add so export you want to export any file system as i exported now and given to you this so right now you don't have option of the export because you don't have any operating system if you install newly you can import so just click import it will ask you where and what you want to import so they are asking open virtual format so this is one format you can do that but we have ova file that's a better format for this what is ova file ova file keep all the application in single file Where is the OVF? It's a like distributed file. You can import multiple file and can sum up. So for EG, we have only one file. Click that, this file system, and they will pop up with from where you want to export. So that's the two point five GB general purpose server. Click that, and do open. Once you are open with that. go for next you can verify the copy the path is given here now you do next don't change this default don't change this default how much cpu and everything later on you can reset this once you are able to import this and if you have same number of operating system running in the virtual box they going to give another name like i have already general purpose server it's automatic rename that so don't worry everything automated it will be done by the operating system sorry by the virtual box clear okay so go and click import while you are importing this they will ask you sorry i'll wait close this sorry i forget to say that something okay one thing you have to remember there is a mac address policy what kind of policy you want to implement so include only net network adapter mac address no you should not copy any mac of older mac or any my mac which is registered here because you supposed to select your own mac all the new mac so that your vm will going to work as a new vm so what you have to do click this option and give the generate new mac address for all the network adapter that is precautions you have to take what you have to select generate new mac addresses for all the network adapter means isme jitne bhi whatsoever the number of adapter will be there they will get assigned with the new mac okay and this is very good practice for the networking purpose so we are networking people and we have to do lab for that so import now and it will take time as per your likes if 6 gb it will take more time if um, it's a 2.5 gb that's why i selected to show you how to import so keep patience if it is taking more time and let the complete that and um, meanwhile so till here it's a clear let me pause 
and you can shoot the questions. Uh, Jitendra, okay, you understand? Uh, yes, and uh, Ashutosh. Means you should not change anything, just you have to select the option for generate new MAC address. Clear? Yes. Okay. Even though you are not able to let me go for slot booking, I will help you to get up. Yes, sure. Okay. So be patient, let complete it because if you interrupt this, this may be corrupt. So sometime it will stuck on 99% file, fail to import appliance, this document, this. Okay. Now, if it's a fail, just close this and what you have to do you you have to close complete your virtual box okay then again you start this is a good example start this and if any operating system is running just switch off that so i'm going to shut down then shut down the my operating system whatsoever is running so i am powering off now so my running operating system that's the mint operating system switched off means all the operating system there is no operating system running on the mint. now you can start i'm going to close this again i'm going to open my vm virtual box and this time i will try to import so Go to file system and this is document okay i'm going to select this again open this next so you select with the new mac i'm not going to change anything then start importing fail to import application this document over your file Let me try for another one okay so there is some error you you guys need to check whether you guys able to do this or not otherwise i will again i'm going to import new file i will give you the another file let me try for the linux this one linux mean to one okay so open this ah yes there is an error do you know why because after OBA file they have dot it they have dot in the file system that is not let me try for the linux mint i'm going to capture this file system and this time it will go for linux mint Okay, automation open next VM virtual box. Okay, right address include address. I'm going for generate new MAC address and import. Let's wait, it's supposed to complete. It's a six GB almost. If it's not working, then what you have to do, you have to reboot your system. So these lab setups are time consuming. Always remember, just I want to show you how to do. Sometimes it's a misbehave. The system. bear with me you can ask me any question if you have in between while it's completing i'm just trying it on my side as well okay Guys, you supposed to test this general server OBA file. 
I think there is some problem with that. Otherwise, I will share you new OBA file. Sometime it's going to corrupt because for testing purpose, I have downloaded so that I can show you. Almost 35, 30, sorry, 80, 80. Okay, cool. It's successful. So once it's successful, you can see um, there is an automatic they given name Linux Mint Automation Lab One. Can you see that, Jitendra? Yes. Yes. So once you are able to, so you can edit now according to that, according to. But right now I ask you to keep this Lint Mint. Uh, sorry mint automation lab 8 gb at least so let's switch on i'm going to start this without changing anything so we have two nick card uh, let me show you what do you mean by two nick card so i have two nick card if you able to see one of the bridge with the wireless for internet one for the vboxnet what is vboxnet vboxnet is the local lan which is going to connect with the other vm operating system i'm going to describe you how to configure and we will see how we can see that so how you can see which network what ip so you can go to into tool and check the preference and in that you can see we have network oh, wait in the file system you go go to uh, go to check the virtual network host network manager and you can see we have one network vboxnet 0 vboxnet 0 suppose you want to create one more lan so that going to be name is a vboxnet 1 net 2 net 3 like that that many network going to be added so what ip it's automatically going to take 192.168.56 series they will assign means in the lan network whatever the virtual lan network going to be happened with this lan so i am going to enable the dscp in that so manual ip so i given the dscp range from 100 it's going to start from dscp ip is 100 and the range going to start from 101 to 254 means whatever ip you are getting above 100 that you are receiving from dscp clear within that lan right yes yes and okay. if it's in below 100 that going to be manual so what i will do for server i will assign the ip manual ip where is the operating desktop operating system it will be go for by dscp within that lan so come to the topology i will meanwhile i switch close this okay we are on so our operating system is ready with it's running you can see this is ready now so i will go to my operating the user is a student and for the here the password can you see the any prompt for the password no so if you enter there is no prompt coming so how do you know where you have to type your password so for user and password i given here student password also student okay so you go to student you just 
come down your cursor will change with the can you see your cursor is changed now yes. you go a little up the cursor is changed can you see that yeah. you just once is the cursor change just click here and type your password so it will not visible student and enter so you are going to enter into your operating system mint operating system ashutosh the the, the gen serve vm that we have does it also have the same credentials uh, no in that we have asu is a username password also asu this is i made for automation lab so um, i specifically spared the lots of time to prepare this because we, topology preparation took time so much so here username and password is so only two category of user and password going to be student student username password and again asu asu okay come to this here we have genus 3 okay apart from that i am not going to show you right now genus 3 i will come to your topology then i will show you just click this terminal you will open with the terminal i keep all the handy terminal over here okay and for putty you go to mint icon just click here you can see putty already installed so you can open the putty also okay idiot so i'm going to close this now i'm going to show you how to set the putty locks and how to install them so before that what is the best practice as soon as you log in to the any operating system linux operating system what you have to do you have to update your package this is the every alternative you do this whatever the new security features package going to be updated in deviance folder is going to be download from you for that you need an internet connectivity how do you check the first very first command in that config sorry interface config i will teach you how to know what command what is the syntax by yourself by using the manual you can see the manual i will teach you how to access the manual and you can understand any um, <clears throat> any description or a, any detailed knowledge about any command we will see in upcoming pro process class so if config if you do we have virtual bridge virtual bridge we will see that this is in the some time in moment first come from this we have 192.163.193344 this is one nick card second nick card we have 56 you know this land this is the came from virtual box land 56 range and it's received the 107 month means this receiving from dscp the ip is received from dscp idiot guys this ip received from dscp so you want to make sure who going to be gateway for this so my local system going to be the gateway for this so try to understand networking guys once you are able to net understand the networking then only you are able to troubleshoot anything so my if i will see my local host now i'm in my local host and you go for the interface configuration same vbox having the range of you can see this 192.168.56.1 this is the my host gate host is a local host is my gateway so i can ping my gateway so you have to test whether i am able, able to ping my gateway or not so 192.168. otherwise we will do testing this is the first one if i am not able to ping my gateway i am not able to connect with my internet so ah it's working means i have connected with my my host network now which one we have so you cannot see wireless connectivity here how do you check which network assigned by the wireless by which we're going to connect with the internet so go to my local host and see wireless networks we have what is the ip the 192.168.193 this is the local LAN created for the internet so if this range is available 
with the 239 means we are okay to connect with the internet so my network will be my internet connectivity will go 193 192.168.193 network so let's go for and check it out so 193 do we have 122 i can see i have first nick card with that let's try to ping that this ip is received for and if you ping 190 193 dot that's the one oh sorry what 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 is the ip the ip 239 oh ping 239 the same ip 193 39 239 is a reachable means we have internet connectivity let's check the internet connectivity do we have i'm going to ping the google now yes it's working now i can update my package what is the first command you have to use sudo command because for updating anything for debian file you need the root privilege so sudo give you the for this command for this command is specific as a root privilege so sudo is a prerequisite now come to the command is called apt apt application update get update so i'm going to get update they're going to ask the privilege if you have root privilege then the password you know the student now if you have internet connectivity then only it's going to be happen because it's going to connect with the oven too and you see mint operating system is a is a different flavor from oven to only linux flavor so it's going to connect and it's going to download if you see the reading package list done means there is something we need to upgrade if you see here you need to upgrade there is a three file you will see first this is a reading package list done this kind of things if it is coming like means you can go ahead it's okay everything up to date but there is some few upgrade you need to do okay this is one log second log they will specifically ask you have to upgrade that time you must upgrade okay right now they did not ask me but i want to show, show you how to upgrade because this is also there is some file or security file we need to update so same command with the sudo privilege you have to do upgrade and this you have to do every alternate day because this is important to keep your system sanitized and up to date so do you want to continue yes just click yes and enter and it's going to download the package and there is a few minor package are downloaded and up to date okay clear guys till here so this three command going to help you to update your system and do this is alternative okay after that you can reboot this let me reboot generally you always do after this so reboot command is called r shutdown if you give with the option with the r it's a reboot if you come with the h it will give you the power off i want to reboot will give r and when you want to do if you enter it will do after some time after a delay of some time but i want just now the so command is very easy shut down reboot now so i just do that let the system reboot you can shoot your question meanwhile so actually once once you have access to uh, this instance once again would you mind running uh, a route command on your terminal i want to see so basically we've got two network interfaces right one is your internal virtual box network and the other one is the NAT network to your uh, your your host machine which which is where you are running virtual machines right and then your internet is going to be through the gateway pointing to your host machine and so i want to see how many what, what's the route setup on your uh, virtual instance okay so 
see once you install virtual box and it going to be compatible with the local host first thing you have to do setup only one thing if you installing the gns then you have to do the netting what you say here in ubuntu or linux flavor once you install they have by default netting between the virtual box and with the, sorry with the local host they don't need netting for the virtual box between local host they behave like a local host means they have nick card different nick card with the locally connected with the local host as well as virtual box so they will assign them as i selected new mac so as soon as they have new mac they will get the new new ip so that's why it's a very important while you will do setup of your virtual box or you import any new operating system you go for the option new mac assignment once you will do that so you will get different ip for that mac I'm able to make your questions easy, clear. Yeah. Ah, because that's why we selected that point. Otherwise, if you have same Mac, you will get the same IP. So you are not able to differentiate or say is a reachable. You are not able to test that. Okay. Now come to the see the route. You want to see the route. So means ip root the command is here ip root again i will teach you how to know what is the command the manual i will come to there see you can see the what is default root the default root goes to the my wireless connectivity and then we have lan this is anyone anyone know what is this this is called apipa automatic private ip addressing so you want to know about our people you can do the ccna lab we have in ccna class so and this is again new stuff i think my operator came up let's go now this is so my cursor changed now you type the student password okay now here we are up to date so let's go for quickly topology um, Ashu, uh, will you run ip route on your uh, virtual machine as well yes yes we will do so go to terminal and ip route that's you have default between same wireless here it's not showing wireless but the same dfcp you can receive that on that so uh, yes. yeah that's what i was so in my case one when i had my instance running right so because you have two network interfaces it basically has two default routes one with a metric of 100 other one with a metric of zero mm -hmm. it seems like we'll have to get we'll have to remove one okay, default yeah. route. Which... good good question suppose you you are running with the server in server you will get that if you have matrix you have to delete that how do you delete it that's a very easy command we have i want to show you just if you want suppose you have two two gateway or if if i i did not understand wrongly you have default two root right nikhil yes yes you want to delete so which one you want to delete so you're supposed to understand that is which one is connected to your internet that you have to keep as a route and other one going supposed I, to uh, local. yes so what is the command you just go for i ip route and Maybe. del then you follow the the syntax what we have here in default route default route i will show you and default route this 192.168 Nine, three, sixty. Okay, and you can follow by the this entire syntax. E. 
DSC DS matric hundred. If you do this, okay, it's not permitted because for this you need the root privilege. So you have to add sudo. They will ask you password and now you can see your ip route so your root is disabled but there is a question mark oh, do we have there is no default i can able to ping my gateway or not let's see i'm going to not able to ping the google.com because oh, sorry we, we have network we have network but the default root is we have as a static not a default clear guys Yep. now let's come to here so um, we will see means how those you got this command should i mugged up no need to mug up i will i will tell you the manual command by which you can practice if you stuck somewhere your maybe your friends or colleague don't know the syntax command how do you going to identify by yourself so i will teach you there's a huge library in the linux by which you can search and you can explore yourself to learn new command the man command we will come we have class for that class for dedicated class for that. couple of two two week we going to explore the linux only once we will comfortable with that we will go for ansible so that we can speed up ansible one now what is the next objective do we have so we have objective installation of sublime text editor okay before that i want to explain you the lab topology so i have already posted the lab topology don't send this posted the lab topology where where we are okay so we have already posted you that page in our classroom come to this so we will understand quickly the lack rack topology that's going to be used later on so pdf yeah. so what do we have here you should concentrate on this rack ip how do you going to access later on you will understand i'm going to quickly for five minutes only later once you practice when once i will explain the lab that time you have to remember how the topology connected how we i'm doing the lab and later on once you book the slot you should understand if you want to do, do the lab so accordingly you're going to see the console logs on your ansible output so we have layer two topology four switches layer two so layer 2 switches these are 2960 series and these are connected with the full mesh can you see full mesh topology you all the interface are set only the access means bty connectivity is open and these are the ip so what are the switch switch 1 to 4 this layer 2 switch if you want to do some lab we will see that layer 2 lab will be there different layer 3 switch lab will be different so that is not available on your iou or any gns3 because then we knew for switch we need the real switch um, boxes for the testing purpose so we have rack for that so we have ip 33 to 36 so try to understand i keep the sequence if you have 33 to 36 your console line also going to be happen 33 to 36 so by looking on ip or by remembering on the console line you can remember so i have given the same ip range as i have selected the console line so while you need to suppose sometime you lose the connectivity you need console of device so you have line number 2033 to 36 and that is your management ip so range will be 172.16.31 will be the range so you have to remember this range this is a private ip range and the, my ip will start from 33 36. okay initially you you refer this now just and for layer 3 switches we have range again switch 6 to 9 with the 38 
dot 38 to 41 again your console line will be 38 to 40 here now how it's a connected this is the two you need the switches router you don't need because we can do the lab in iou you can do your test every router is stuff there if you need router also we have available with the router three router are available in the rack and do the lab we have one srx we have two firewall with the license you can five license for vpn so we can test for the vpn also and we have three router that's all one srx juniper firewall for the testing how are you going to test so we have centralized as switch that ip going to be this the management as switch and the range will be this so ip 31.49 and this is the lan from which any local system connected in network so they will get because dscp running on the this switch as switch so very simple connectivity from as you can connect every switch is directly connected to this as okay and same way there is a terminal server it's connected every device connected with the ter terminal server so com comfortable with the, this ip first and once you start the lab you will see gradually okay so just you have to remember this range for now you just remember this range i given for this topology to you so that you can keep your in your inbox and whenever you need you should remember the topology always work with the this LAN 172.16.31 whenever you see that IP means this is a physical connective it's going to so slowly you will comfortable this is one let me open next topology Ansible topology that's a very important you should start learning with this only uh, we're going to start let's quickly understand what are the connectivity and how we're going to do the lab so we have three router router one router two router three the range is 192.168.122 means the lan if you see dot 10 is router one dot 20 is router two dot 30 is. means within same lan and this lan is called virtual bridge first lan virtual bridge so you can see this lan in your box if config you can see the range of this 192.168.122.1 this is a already i install in your in your system um, quick question ashu um yes. So these three routers, router one, two, three, is this something that we're running on GNS on this? Uh... Yes, right. No. right. Okay. You, you are absolutely right. And let me open GNS, I'm going to show you. So this, this, uh, this IP running on the GNS router, and you don't touch, don't change this interface, because this is for management purpose. You can configure other interface for your lab if you want to test so i already given the you can select from recent project or you can open the project from this so i already given here you can see i have given the four lab here already inbuilt for lab untitled just for testing purpose and you can give you can give the name these three are three layer three lab gns3 or anything here you don't have any connected with the net we have two netting topology netting topology means this topology is connected with your host so that you can connect all vm to this so only the two lab you have with the netting let me show you first one router for some testing purpose i given i will start your lab from one router so that if once you are comfortable with the one router you can do for three four five ten and we have we generally do the lab practice on the three routers so i will select this one 
let's see what we have we have three router one two three router okay and this is the interface which is connected for the management purpose please don't modify don't delete this three interface this is for management purpose and i have net router that's a linux host operating system and this is LAN, which is the 192.168.122. Means this three router is going to connect with your Ansible control box. Who is your Ansible control box? Is it nothing? Your VM. Who is this is your VM? So this is the gateway. Let me switch on my GNS router. So just you click here. Start your GNS. Do you want to start all? Yes. I'm starting my GNS IOU. Meanwhile and let's take the console of all three i click the console part so all three going to reboot now my purpose i'm able to access this this router are being able to my local host or not my gateway or not so who is my gateway here my gateway is terminal so my ip is 192.168.122.1 so let me say this is one so IP interface brief. This is a normal router command. So we have first interface 192.168.122.30. Same LAN we have one here. Let's ping and let's test the reachability. Do we have or not? Ping 192.168.122.30. One twenty two dot one. This is my gateway. First, you can try to ping yourself. Of course, you supposed to able to ping yourself. Now, I'm going to ping my gateway. First packet, few packet going to be dropped because the packet forwarding takes. Let's start pinging from here. I'm able to ping from here, but can I am able to ping my to to my router? Yes, one ninety. Sorry, the range is one ninety two. 192.168.122. I'm able to ping myself, yes, and I'm able to ping my router, yes, I'm able to ping. You can see all the three router is not pingable. The 320 for the router 2 and 10 for the router. So, you understand the setup. What is the setup says that. I have topology if you here topology this virtual virtual bridge this three router is reachable to this control control system who is my control system my mint operating system that having IP 192.168.122.1 clear the topology one part Okay, thank you. We will do all the live here from control system. Why control system? From we will install every Ansible Python here and we will pull and push the data to the router. Okay, now this is one LAN, one subnet. Now come to the other subnet. Other subnet we have, which is we created virtual box network connectivity zero. We discussed that is the IP range 192.168.56. 6.1 this is second LAN which we have connectivity the generic server which I given to you and if it's not working please test I will upload again this one and second support line system which I already show you so you have to so these two one is not a server but is behave like server because we will test something we have one actual Linux server, one we have operating system. This is UI, this is the pure command line. But you can run on the both command line is going to show. Now, this is one LAN which is connected to the virtual box server in the same LAN. Okay, now third we have connectivity with the physical rack. That is rack infra connectivity. And we have 172.16.31.49 slash 20, which I discuss the topology. If you remember, just now we discuss. So, Astos, can I see that topology? No, not going to see in the virtual. But 
when I will do the lab, I can show you once I will switch on my rack. So you can see that range it's going to receive from uh, once the NIC card is connected. But we have to disable the NIC card of the only one NIC card I can connect with the my local host, actual local host. That's we have to remove the Wi-Fi, either Wi-Fi or either rack. Dear guys, yes. Any questions? So, this physical rack that you have, one seventy two sixteen thirty one forty nine slash twenty seven. Yeah. Right. So, let me ask you this: so on the on the GNS, you've got three router, one switch. That switch has That's a virtual switch. Yeah, so that virtual switch has a network card which is on VirtualBox network, and then it of course has a interface which is in uh, the the bridge interface, and then the third interface that it has is basically going to be pointing to your physical rack. How does that connection really work? It's a virtual, so it's a virtual switch. On the virtual switch, you have an interface. That connects to your physical rack somehow. Okay. So we are going so, to do routing over there. Um, okay, complete your course. No, okay. no, no. I, I, I just, I'm just trying to figure out. So everything else makes sense uh, because your three routers, your virtual switch, your three virtual routers uh, are running on GNS3. Right, then your gen server, your supervisory server, which is basically GUI and command line Linux boxes, and your control system, which is also a Linux server, main server, all of those are running on your uh, virtual boxes, right? So all that makes sense. The only connection that I'm, I'm unaware of or don't know how it's gonna work is basically the connection that is going to the physical rack. Okay. Physical rack is not going to work for you guys. First, okay. let me hear. It's going to work for only for me. This is applicable only for me. Okay. Let me okay. explain you. So, after, so. Yeah. I did not have done the set of. Bear with me if you can. Yeah, so, uh, Ashutosh, if it's, it's something that we can take offline, that's fine. We don't have to waste time on this call right now. Oh, okay, fine. So, we, we will see that. Um, uh, just time quickly, I want to um, say that here we have these three on GNS3. That's clear. With this LAN, and this is the actual host. This is the actual host where it's a genus 3 is running and this is virtually connected with this LAN. This part is clear. Second, this is a real host having within virtual box these two are there. So, so this is also fine. We have within virtual box with the virtual NIC card. Now this LAN infra as soon as I will connect this virtual host this host will be virtual for the actual host that's the oven too where it's running and they have connectivity with this so once i will connect the rack here on this actual it will give the provision to connect this virtual control host as i selected as a new mac address so they got the virtual new MAC address. So once it will got the virtual MAC address, this system, they says that we have, we are two people, two MAC, we have two people. So rack will give the two IP, one IP to my real host, one to virtual control host. So as soon as we receive two IP, we are able to successfully access. But this is not available for you guys. 
for that you have to slot you have to book the slot i will make available and you can run the on my control host right. all the work well, okay right. i have quickly i am able to up to that i will discuss if you want in detail we will see that now come to the last part of the topology but it's a very important and this is uh, depend upon your dedication how much time you invest in that any connect bfn go to this any connect bfn i think everyone know the any connect bfn i will help you to install any connect bfn on your control box from this you can do the vpn connectivity to cloud cisco and you can access the all this nexus i will see you how the sandbox there is a sandbox what do you mean by sandbox we will take one class how the sandbox is different because people are thinking virtual box is same way the sandbox no sandbox is different from the virtual box we will see what is do you mean by the sandbox now how it's working how you can connect to the vpn and you can access your dna center there is a very good number of lab we can do you can access the splunk you you can do this is again is depend i will teach you how to do the this testing and how you can reserve the lab once you are comfortable with the always on system then we will go for reserve the lab any one of we going to reserve for 8 hour and we will discuss and we will do the lab okay so every time we will run, means at a, alternatively we going to reserve the lab and we will do lab. but this going to be happened once you are comfortable with the all coding all the infrastructure you know i have to test this on the linux and we will prepare we will discuss and keep the ready the things okay guys create somehow yes. basic yeah i'm good yes yes yeah okay thank you guys so this is the plan of uh, how we going to so we supposed to start our hands on as much as you can do on your genus theory on router then you come with the prepare with the um, topology we will do on rack again rack and going to cost us so um, once we rack on the ac and everything is running on so we will prepare everything before switching on the rack and we will do the lab in two hour or three hour whatsoever so that and we capture the all log later on we're going to study compare using those logs okay so if you want to add anything to make these things advance so i will be very happy so if we, we can make this uh, more productive class so uh, and last we have move what is left so let's how to install the sublime tax editor i'm going to quickly going to show you how you have to test this is very easy one as we have explained already you can defer while you are installing so you have detailed command over here so let's understand quickly how it's a command so first this update update means this is going to sudo apt get update is going to update your local host package debian package we already done this but we will run this time now now i'm going to install the snap debian file once you able to snap debian file this snapshot available almost in huge number of library or package software having in the snap so if you able to install the snap by using the snap you can install the sublime tag. that's the easiest method to do that what's the benefit of snap using the snap not apt whenever you're going to update your system it will be automatic going to update okay no need to separately you're going to update your sublime tag clear yep. yep so let's start doing that so first command what we have so sudo apt get update which is already done 
and as soon as you given sudo to you have to give the your privilege so uh, already updated i am not going to update anything no longer has release file okay minor okay that's uh, can't do accurate ever disabled by default okay that's not a uh, problem go to install the snap d install snap snap d debian file so it's already installed because i have installed that already so it's going to install it will take time okay so you will see it's automatic install in that now by using the snap you can now i'm not going to use apt i'm going to use snap all right it will take the command you can install command quickly let's see that so install sublime tax classic sometime if you are not remember this also um, you can type directly install sublime tax if you did not remember the classic just go for installation they are asking you to rephrase that something i already installed so i have already installed here but you can see how you can install snap help rephrase so we have already so these are the three command you have to give and it's going to be installed if it is not installed so you can practice this in your ubuntu obf file what i'm going to upload today okay this is everything is installed how do you see whether it's installed or not nothing you just sublime text you just type or you use no need to remember use tab like i just want to show you control l create the screen go and type i just type sub and use tab and give the help line it will sublime tab. now you enter your text editor going to be second way how are you going to you going to add this on your on your favorite also how are you going to add so we will see in next class i think we are running with the time we have lots of feature to see so you see that second very important i have to see how we going to give the lock capture so i'm going to show you the option how we have to set the lock capture so i am going to favorite one i can see my putty is there open this putty and you can see the session you can give your session name over here and go for logging if you go for logging you have to give your path for that suppose i want to make one folder on them let me close everything I want to make folder so I will make one folder on desktop so one folder I am creating create one folder like log folder log file and you can give your recording to your name create this once you are able to create click right click here and open the terminal over here and you can see pwd means what is your path the path is this slash home slash student slash desktop this is your path so you have to remember this path and same path followed by this command which is i mentioned over here so you can see the path here so you have different path for the log file and followed by this what do you mean by this log you can y for the year m for the month d for the day p for the time h for the host name so it will give you your year month day with the time okay period guys still here so i'm going to stop here class you can ask me question you can post your questions and i will see you in next class with the progressive class for linux we install already linux we will see command we will get the family of the day-to-day -day command which is going to help you in the ansible and python lab 
बाय थैंक यू